Today, I'm going to talk about why everyone is talking about the 7.2% drop between home sales from January to February of 2022. So uh, if you guys have seen it, this is a news article that's going on right now. It's being posted all over social media. I've seen it going crazy. People like, I don't know, the the average Joes are talking about how home sales have dropped significantly. So what I want to do today is I want to dig into that. Is it true? Is it not true? And what does it mean for you? Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Bill Allen. I am a uh, was a Navy pilot for a really long time. I uh, flew helicopters and airplanes for the Navy and went from that to full-time real estate investing. I went from dabbling in it, just doing one house a year, to doing upwards of 200 deals a year over five years or so. So it took me about a year to scale up my business. And I want to share, I built this channel to kind of share some of that stuff with you so you don't have to go through all of the struggles and problems that I had to go through to get there. So um, today what I'm going to talk about is some stuff that's in the current events. I'm talking about this right here. Existing home sales fade 7.2% in February. It was um, an article by the National Association of Realtors. I've seen it in Forbes. Uh, I've seen it on CNN. I've seen it everywhere. I've seen people posting it all over Facebook and Instagram and even TikTok. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk about um, what this means. And uh, I was a test pilot for the Navy for, um, for a few years. And when I went to test pilot school, what I realized is I could make data look however I wanted. When I was flying we would uh, track all the data on the helicopter. We'd go out for like a one hour flight, we'd come up with this whole plan, and then I'd, I'd, I'd um, record all of this data throughout a whole flight, and I'd bring it back to the office, and then I'd sit there and try to figure out what I wanted to say. And this is usually a helicopter or an airplane that I'd never flown before, and we're doing a review on it. And, and, or maybe I just have a couple hours in, I'm trying to figure out what's going on and tell the story. And so I'd take the data, I'd have to make charts, and I'd have to write these reports that are like 100 pages long. Same thing's happening here. It's, a, it's somebody who's making a sensational headline trying to tell a quick story about what I'm going to show you today as being just one data point. So you can never tell the full story off of one data point. So the quote here is existing home sales fade 7.2% in February. So what they're doing is they're taking home sales in January and comparing it to home sales in February and saying there's a 7.2% drop. In a vacuum, that means nothing. It means nothing without all the other data. So let's go find all the other data. Um, I'm gonna nerd out a little bit. Hopefully uh, you guys are cool with some charts and stuff like that. But right here, I'm gonna go into um, Redfin. So they were saying that the home sales dropped by 7.2%. Uh, so right here in Redfin, this is one of the Redfin charts that you can pull. Um, it's really cool stuff. You can find uh, data like this pretty much anywhere. And, and right here I have active listings. So one thing that I want to talk about is these, the home sales falling doesn't tell the story. The story is, well, are there actually that many homes on the market in February that could have even been sold? So let's think about it for a second. If I have 100 houses that are on the market in January and I sell all 100 houses in January, right? Um, then I had 100% of the homes that were available to be sold got sold. That's great, right? That would be like zero days uh, of inventory out there. We're pretty low on inventory. We're just over a month in most uh, metro cities in inventory. It's going to vary. Remember, real estate is hyper local. So you have to remember that even through this entire talk that I'm giving right now. So uh, real estate is hyper local. So it will also depend on where you are. So the, the, the data analysts can take data from wherever they want. Now, if I had 100 houses, I sold 100. And then the next month, I had 50 houses that were available to be sold, and I sold all of them, right? All the inventory. Then I would have sold 50 houses. And I couldn't have any more houses to sell because I sold them all. Now, what the National Association of Realtors could write an article about then is houses, like um, um, housing sales from January to February dropped by 50% even though I didn't even have any inventory to sell, right? So let's look and see if we had less inventory in February than we did in January. Let's look at that data. And just so you know, right here, I'm using a region type of the metro areas. Um, you can go county, metro. So I chose metros. These are the major metros. The major metros around the country, they pretty much dominate our real estate sales. Now, if you're in a small rural county or something like that, it may look different for you. But ultimately, you know that when we've had crashes or we have these big booms, it's usually led by some of the major metro cities, right? Um, so 
San Diego, um, New York City, San Francisco, these kind of areas, Washington, D.C. potentially, these are areas, maybe Miami, some of the bigger cities. They're driving what's actually happening. And so when you see that, they're usually leading indicators of what's happening. Not always, but usually. So I'm going to use major metros, uh, all Redfin metros I picked. Um, I just put uh, 2020, 2021, and 2022 here. Um, we could put all of these if you want to clutter this up and see. So one thing to notice, here's 2020, here's 2021, and here's 2022. We have a significant drop in inventory, right? So, I mean, you can see year over year is down 25%. Year over year here was down 30% from 2020 to 2021. So not only are we 30% less in, from 2020 to 2021, we're another 25% less than that, right? So there's hardly any inventory here which is why our housing prices are going up. So here's January. Let's just highlight this right here. So I'm gonna write this number down. So January 3rd, uh, so in January, we do have a four week cycle here. So January, I have 468,644 listings, right? Approximately in January. There's a couple days in January that are longer, but we want a four week, we wanna keep it similar because February is a shorter month. So here's February, January 31st to February 27th. So February, this is February inventory in the major metros, 456,919. So I'm gonna grab my calculator. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm taking very quick math here. I'm gonna take 468,644. I'm gonna subtract 456,919. And then I'm gonna, so that's 11,725 homes less. So I had 11,725 homes less in February than I did in January. So like I was talking about, I actually have less inventory in February. So even if I stayed consistent on my home sales, I have less inventory. Potentially I have less opportunity to sell those houses in February. So it's a supply and demand equation. This doesn't say that it's, this is absolutely the reason why home sales dropped, right? But this is a possibility. So this next to that number tells a little bit different story. So let's see if the home sales or the inventory dropped by 7.2%. Um, I don't think so based on rough math. So I'm going to take my 11,725. I'm going to divide by 456,919, which is my February number. And I'm getting 2.6% less inventory. So I have less inventory over uh, February as I did January. So if you look at this also, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at um, February, March, and April much in uh, 2020 just because that's when the coronavirus hit. But when I start looking at this, I'm looking at a curve that's pretty similar, right? Inventory was dropping in 2021, or 2021 and it's dropping in 2022. And so then what we see is we see these summer selling months start coming on. We've got kids coming out of school. We got April, May, June. Um, and through the summer selling months, you see the inventory typically go up right? During coronavirus, we saw a very, like a kind of an inversion from what we normally see, but we see the inventory go up. And then over uh, the kind of the fall, everybody's going back to school. And then you got through the holidays, you start seeing a drop in inventory. It's pretty typical. Um, this, I mean, this is a typical real estate sales cycle uh, every year, usually, depending on if something wild's happening. So now we see we have 2.6% less inventory. Now, what I wanted to do real quick is let's just look at home sold. Let's look at home sold in the major metros. Let's look at this chart. It might take a second to pull it up, but I'm gonna look at major metros home uh, sales right now in, um, oh, so these are, uh, that's new listings. I wanna go to home sales. Okay, so home sold. Let's take a look at this. So we've got this, we've got four weeks, same thing, 2020, 2021, 2022. So, here I've got 2020, I've got 2021 in orange, and I've got 2022 in this black color right here. So January, January home sold, I have a four week period. Remember, major metros, I got 58,617. So January, I'm just gonna write this down, 58,617. Okay, so let's look at February. So remember, we saw a 7.2% drop, right? In that headline. So February, 61,862. Um, okay, so this is a bit interesting, right? So we saw in that headline, that sensational headline, home sales dropped by 7.2% between January and February. However, what I'm looking at right here on this chart, you guys can see it, this is real time with me. Home sold, it looks to me like we had this like dip in, 
January, less homes sold, and then it starts going up in February. And we're even seeing data now being sold between February and March. If I look at a cycle with the majority of February, so this is just one week later, right? February 7th through March 6th, it's 67,640. So another 6,000 homes sold um, during that period of time, over a four-week period. So something's off here to me. And th these are the metros, like I talked about, kind of like some of the leading indicators. And so if I take this, 61,862, and I subtract 58,617, I see a it went up, the home sales actually went up by 3,245. So if I do that math, divide that by 61,862 for the February inventory, I have 5.25% increase. I have an actual increase. So, so I have a decrease in inventory. So here's what I had that I can find between January and February through this data source. I can see a decrease in inventory by 2.6%. And I can actually see an increase in home sales by five and a quarter percent. So something is off here, right? Something's not right. Either somebody's pull, just pulling um, one, one data point to tell a story of 7.2% sales drop. Somebody's trying to say that let's get scared for some reason. But I mean, I could t with this data that I just showed you right here, right? I could tell a completely different story. I can tell one that is, well, actually sales are going up. Inventory is going down in the major metros and prices are going up still. So I, I, I do all this because I want to point out something for everyone. I want you to think for yourselves. You're going to find this when I talk, teach marketing, when I teach sales, when I teach anything that I teach on this channel. I want you to think for yourself. I want you to go out and look at data. I don't want you to look at headlines. I don't want you to pass on, uh, we call it scuttlebutt in the Navy, right? The stuff that like just rumors. And that's what the media does. And so I'd plug in. Um, I would try to figure out what's going on, look at, look at data, look at the raw data to tell the story, and find somebody to listen to that also can show you where to look, how to look, and teach you how to do it. Not just say, come back here, I'm going to spoon feed you all the stuff, like the, like the news channels do. So um, hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, Redfin is a data source that I like to look at. Um, there's plenty of others out there. The National Association of Realtors has some great data too. So I'm really interested in how they got their data from that 7.2% drop. But um, they could take the entire country and just say that home sales dropped by 7.2%. It's just a linear one-point data. I, there's a lot of more things. How many, how many pending sales are there? How many are uh, on the market? What's coming on the market? How much inventory do we have? All of those things to think about for you. And I'm going to talk about more of that on this channel coming up. So if you guys like this video, uh, please subscribe, hit the little bell, um, tell your friends about it, share it on social media. I would love uh, for more people to get some really good stuff like this and actually learn how to do things. That's my goal with this channel. Let me figure out, let me show you how to do it um, so that you can figure out things on your own and start to think for yourselves instead of just been uh, spoon-fed headlines that don't make any sense right now. So um, where are we going? I'm going to keep watching and uh, I'll keep uh, talking about that on this channel. So all right, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.